what's happening this year? To a great extent, it is the familiar event that people have grown to know. Uh, from the Manx Motorcycle Club's perspective and with support of, the, of Rob and his department, we have introduced an ultra lightweight class this year to try and encourage younger riders into the event with smaller machines that can uh, enable them to learn their way in safety. Is that a problem attracting younger riders to the MGP? It's a very dangerous event as people well know from, from history and therefore we are very careful to select riders who are capable um, before we accept their entry. Uh, the issue with that, of course, is that they have to have been fairly experienced elsewhere before they come here, and therefore most of them are not younger riders. So we looked and had discussions with the department and, and Rob, and we looked at ways of bringing in riders earlier, and that means engaging them with a, a safer class to run in so that we reduce the risk but allow them to start earlier in their racing careers. There has been moves over, it's now the Festival of Motorcycling, it's not just a racing event, it's, it's got all sorts of things encompassed uh, within that fortnight period. I mean, what's happening this year, are you still putting a lot of emphasis on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're going for a very strong festival sort of experience this year. We've got a lot of events outside the, the usual racing. Um, as, as you say, it is the Festival of Motorcycling. It brings the Manx Grand Prix and the classic racing together uh, for a fantastic two weeks. I mean, this year we've obviously got the, the Festival of Derby during the you know non-race sort of days. We've also got the Sundown Cinema experience this year, again with 70s classic films such as Star Wars, Grease, Superman and Quadnophenia. And um, we've also got the classic party going on and also the artisan local food producers uh, will be there as well. So we're hopefully bringing all of these experiences off the track. In respect of um, parades, we're also celebrating the 30th anniversary of, of Honda, the RC uh, machine. We're also celebrating the 50th anniversary of Triumph and BSA triples. We're also over uh, really excited to have John McGuinness back and he's going to um, be riding the the famous Mike Halewood um, machine, the Ducati uh, machine around the track, and that's the 40th anniversary of that. So there's a lot of exciting things going on outside of the racing. But with regards to the classic racing, we've brought um, an absolute um, list of um, TT riders who will be competing for this year's events. Now, you do bring the big names from the TT over for this. Um, there has in the past been uh, a bit of debate over... Whether, the, whether or not that detracts from the event as it was from the Manx Grand Prix as such because you've got these big names uh, at the start of the week and they tail away towards the end. Um, there has been accusations that it's a bit of an us and them situation during the event. Is that still the case? Is that still the perception? Um, it, it's difficult to merge the two racing styles through the whole of the week. Um, it does mean that there's an intense focus early in race week on the classics uh, and that the Grand Prix races end up later in the week. It's something we'd like to consider um, merging in a, a neater way uh, and try and run the two events. But whilst we have the situation with the professional riders um, turning up for the Classic TT event, clearly they want to put the most into it that they can whilst the focus is on the racing um, and, and uh, at the moment that's all squeezed into the weekend. Yeah I mean just to carry on from here we have a, a great working relationship with the Manx Motorcycle Club and we do want to forge greater links and we do need the two events to cross over into one festival of motorcycling. However, as we, as we sit today, you know, the, the figures are, you know, and the, the, the value to the Isle of Man is, is all there to see. You know, we've increased the visitor numbers from nearly 9,000 up to 16,000 since then the initiative was started in around 2013. It also contributes over £7 million to the island's economy. You know, visitor spend is, is now around almost £10 million, up from £4.9 million in 2009. So it, we have lifted the event what we do need now is is to actually bring the two events together because there does that perception that there is them and us and there is this tailing off on the tuesday what i desperately want to to see as the political member is more of a crossover 
I want to see the, the events merge better together so it becomes one big festival of motorcycling and the people who cannot come to the TT for various reasons can come to this event and still enjoy high quality racing but also a lot of activities uh, around the event but also enjoy the beauties of the island in a little bit more of a, a, a quieter atmosphere should we say. Is mixing up the race schedules, running the classic TT throughout the week rather than just at the start of the week, a way of doing it? It's it's a discussion that's ongoing, and it, it's something I've been trying to. We've been having discussions with with Peter and the Manx Motorcycle Club since I took up this position nearly eighteen months ago, and those discussions will continue after this year's event. I'm hoping that we can forge greater ties. But the, a, a conversation I've had with Peter is is you know what is what does the Manx Motorcycle Club and the Manx Grand Prix actually represent? Is it is it is it a stepping stone? Is it an amateur event? But then on the back on the side of that you then have these professional riders who are very well known through the TT races and through wider fields and events that they enter throughout the year so it is very hard to bring these two groups and two events together but we do have a good working relationship but we need to do more to forge those events together to become that festival of motorcycle that people know. And what about the facilities at the grandstand I mean are, are the riders and the teams happy with what's being provided? I think racing in general has become far more professional and even the amateur guys who race in the Manx Grand Prix are bringing more and more equipment with them and one of the issues has been for everyone that the paddock is just not large enough to accommodate the equipment that people would like to bring with them these days. So I think a review of the paddock is something that's, that's needed with some urgency and we're having to squeeze things in for this year. And, and as Rob said, we're in discussion about changes that can be made. Now, in terms of, I suppose, long-term stability for the event and um, rolling things out year on year, I mean, we know that there's been a bit of a hold-up with the Vision 9 debate and that deal falling through. Um, what about long-term plans for the event from now? Uh, are you giving people security in terms of what structure it's going to take into the future? Well, as I've mentioned previously, the discussions with the Manx Motorcycle Club and all the stakeholders are taking place. They've been taking place for around 18 months and they will continue into the future. Obviously, we're looking at the, the bigger picture of what we actually want in respect of facilities, infrastructure in and around the, the grandstand. That's underway and, as you say, that will develop over time. Obviously, we will need to build um, better facilities for the riders of all of classes to make sure that they've got the best facilities we also need to manage the space and that space unfortunately is getting smaller because of health and safety restrictions so it is it's one of the big um, problems that we're always facing that riders bring more equipment but health and safety and ex expect us to um, to manage the space in a, in, a, in, a, in a better way there's been incidents since 2017 which has not helped you know and for example you know people having barbecues next to petrol cans not being respectful to their neighbors with regard to what they're doing how they're storaging storing things. So all of these problems are creating additional um, pressures, should we say, which the department, the motorcycle and team have to deal with. And now, as you say as well, the, the Manx Motorcycle Club, because they also have to deal with these pressures and we also have to manage that space. So it's trying to uh, manage the expectations of riders, stakeholders, but also provide the facilities that they need. It's not easy. Now we know there are incidents during the TT. Won't go into into any of them in particular. But has that has that meant changes for the festival of motorcycling from a, I suppose an organisational point of view? Well, I'll, I'll let Peter talk in respect of any changes that come from the Manx uh, Motorcycle Club and their event. I think it would be wrong for us at this moment to actually to to, to go into those incidents. We know that. Um, the incident is being um, investigated by an independent uh, person that was appointed. I, I think the one thing I will say at this stage, I think it's been a, a terrible year for motorcycling in respect of the, the tragedies that we've suffered, not just on Ireland, I'm talking about throughout the world. You know, there's been some very high profile tragedies over the last 12 months. And I, again, my thoughts and condolences goes with the families involved and, I, and those who are still recovering. I, I wish them a speedy recovery and, and we will look forward to welcoming on the Isle of Man in the near future. The, uh, the face of the event from the Banks Motorcycle Club's perspective has changed significantly over the last 20 years. It used to be an event which was primarily run as a race event for the riders. As the racing world has become more professional, even the amateur riders who come here 
for the Manx Grand Prix are approaching it in a in a more professional way. The club has therefore had to respond to that and we have to run a professional event. Therefore, over the last few years, we have changed our entry requirements significantly to make sure that riders who are allowed to come and compete are of the right standard. And also, we ask them, as Rob's inferred, that, that they put on a more professional show. And we recognise that although our interest is primarily in good racing, as we've seen in the last few years, that we recognise our obligations to the Isle of Man. And therefore, we want the whole event to be of a, a standard that presents the island in a good way. Interestingly, uh, this year's TT saw 18 riders from last year's Manx Grand Prix ride. Therefore, we have changed from being an entity in its own right as a race meeting to recognise in our role in feeding good quality riders up into the TT races. And therefore, that's part of the reason we've introduced this ultra lightweight class to start and bring people through in a steady flow. The world, the racing world, like the rest of the world, has changed. And in the last 20 years of, of the racing world, we've seen things like British superbikes appear and more media exposure on mainstream television. So the whole um, visibility of racing has changed and become much more professional. And the Manx Motorcycle Club and, and the Grand Prix event has now had to compete with um, races elsewhere in the world. And we've recognised that and we've had to change the way we operate and we also recognise our role is different. Rather than being an end product for racers, um, many years ago the riding the Manx Grand Prix was an achievement in its own right. For a lot of the better riders now, it is just a step along the professional route towards things like the TT. Yeah.